Welcome back to the charismatic voice. Reaction channels are often about the magic of that first time listen. And I have listened to The Cure before, but I personally love to have a lot more in-depth analysis. So for today's song, I've chosen something by The Cure that I haven't heard before. And this will be my very first time deep diving into Robert Smith's vocals. Let's get to it. I just want to go back to the beginning right away because it was so interesting to hear that very first chimey sound that was like a little bit like Tinkerbell flying in. And then it almost sounded like it was reversed up high as we got another really high, uh, just a high focused shiny sound. Right there's Tinkerbell flying in. And then it almost sounds like it gets reversed. So this entire intro has a really lovely groove. I like the the kicks and then the up feeling. It's got a, just something you can hook into very, very easily. And it also has a vibe that I think is perfect for driving. And that's where I've really heard The Cure a lot before. Uh, they're one of Kirk's favorite bands. And so I've heard him bring them on the radio before. Be like, oh yeah, there's this song by them. And so I've heard them in passing many times and felt that they were just really good, good drive music. Uh, just has a good, uh, like a kind of an uplifting vibe overall or a life is beautiful as it passes us by kind of vibe. And I like that, um, but I am very excited to get to the vocal. <laughs> Oh, that's so interesting. It almost sounded like they used that reverse sound to sort of bring us into a, another uh, tonal center, essentially. Huh. Oh my gosh, this is so clever how the music video is essentially doing like a snapshot of various moments uh, that, that comes back to this pictures of you idea. Uh, also, I'm noticing that there's sort of like a very, 
black and white sort of smudgy kind of feeling to the pictures here. And I know that this story or the, I think the lyrics were based on uh, Robert Smith finding pictures of his wife and his wallet after a house fire, I believe, as he was going through that wreckage. So I feel like maybe there's some of that influence in the visual here as well. Tinkerbell again. I've been looking so long at these pictures of you that I almost believe that they're real. I've been living so long with my pictures of you that I almost believe that the pictures are all I can do. <laughs> There's something so glamorous about his presentation and sound but at the same time it's kept like simple and <laughs> it's all like contradictory how those come together I love the clarity overall and there's a certain sweetness too it's um sweetness in the lyrics and the sound Ooh, let's go back a little bit I also really like the way that that was mixed in there. I think you've got a couple different doubles of his sound and the doo-doos, and they felt like they're just reminiscing. <laughs> I really like the way he enunciates L's. <laughs> it's so specific, but let's talk a little bit about L's. They happen a lot in these lyrics, a lot. L's are a very liquid kind of consonant that they often can be enunciated at different points along your tongue. I've been so, long. so, so long. He actually goes into almost a shadow vowel right before the L. I've been looking so long and lingers in there a little extra time. Let's do that again. I've been looking so long. You hear that moment right before he opens up into long where he goes back into that L. It really gives it a little bit of extra clarity. L's are something that is very difficult across different languages. In Italian, they tend to be kind of flicky. Uh, in Russian, you get a very, like a flat, uh, almost elongated kind of L. Uh, it can get kind of mushy at times, and you have to deal with that with singing because that can affect the tone quality a lot. I like the way that his have clarity, and he's able to elongate them here without making it any any sort of mushiness in his tone quality whatsoever. <laughs> And we often get into something called L-colored vowels. R-colored vowels are another really common thing in American English that you have to deal with. He specifically does a beautiful L-colored vowel on real here. It doesn't get too much O, oh, not that um, really flat kind of sound that again can make a tone quality sound muddy instead of clear. Instead, he has just a beautiful shading of it. I would say the tongue essentially doesn't get too flat overall. So listen to real and the way that there's a vowel at the end that sounds like it has L coloration, but it's still really beautiful and clear.
is so sweet. The lyrics are super, super sweet. Also, I'm just digging the earnestness in his tone quality. I had never noticed before how he really has a lot of sort of air sizzle that happens on top. If you think about when you go into vocal production, sometimes you get into these things called spectrograms and you see this presentation essentially of frequencies that are heard in a, a voice or just any sound. And uh, sometimes we have things like S's, which are very sizzly and that's a much brighter, um, a much higher frequency overall. And and air, when it has that sizzle and that shimmer, it tends to be living up really higher too. So if you think that's a high frequency actually. And in his sound overall, there's some air sizzle that I hear that's going to be a little bit higher. Um, I think that's just his natural sound. I don't think that's all done in post. It might also have something to do with his mic choice. Um, and it also would be influenced by some of the overtones that I hear in his sound. It just sounds like he's got a, a good, healthy sound. And so you're going to have some extra, some extra sparkle overall. <laughs> And it's really interesting when his voice gets a little more energy and emphasis in it. There are tiny moments where he actually goes to like just a little bit sharp. And I really think it works for the overall sound to do that. Um, sometimes people will go a, a little under to give a little more emphasis and his is definitely hanging out high. Uh, it's also really interesting. Sometimes voices when they're more supported or less supported, they have a tendency to go flat or sharp. And it can depend on the voice type, actually. It's very, very, very fascinating to me always whether or not a person tends sharp or flat. Um, but I particularly think that having this sort of enthusiasm and emphasis with a sharp nod works for this sound more than one that would be, uh, that came from underneath the pitch instead. <laughs> Right there. The scream had the make believe, screamed at the sky. And you finally found all your courage to let it all go. This has not been pitch corrected, too. Um, you can just, I know what to listen for when something is super, super specific. Um, what kind of artifacts appear. This one doesn't sound like it's had any pitch correction done on it, and it gives it that sort of raw, um, very earnest element, and it's still very good on the pitch. Don't get me wrong, but it lets it have a little bit more of that expression, and I I think that it, <laughs> it just makes this verse somehow feel more human to me, a little bit more relatable. I really like that. Why does that snow? Sorry, how are there palm trees and snow in the same set area? And and I mean, there was a polar bear. I don't think it was a real polar bear. Um, but what, how did this happen? Where is this being filmed? Because this is crazy. Crazy, y'all. Are those fake palm trees? This must be fake. Yeah, 
you guys, his hair is amazing. Bandmates' hair are also amazing. And it reminds me of this time when I uh, tried to make my hair look like Medusa. This is for Halloween in Germany, by the way, which uh, I... Germans don't celebrate Halloween as as much as we Americans can get into it, especially as adults when we get totally decked out and then roam the streets with a bunch of international friends in, in crazy costumes. So anyhow, I remember doing my hair on like all of these, like I twisted them so, 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 so tight, put them in a bobby pin, stuck them under a wig cap, still went to opera rehearsal. I think I was rehearsing Violetta at the time. And... Uh, and I wore them like that for about 36 hours and then hairsprayed them and tried to go green and everything. And my hair still did not turn out as good as his hair is right now. I need some tips. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it was a stone white <laughs> comment that made me think of Medusa. <laughs> maybe it wasn't just the hair. There must have been something <laughs> subconscious underneath there. <laughs> My arms, crying for the death of your heart. You were stone white, so delicate, lost in the cold. You were always so lost in the dark. <sighs> There's like a... Their creaking sound, like this is um, like uh, almost uh, the sound of the vocal folds just starting to get going sometimes in his sound. There's definitely a very unique timbre that feels like it's just him. And I'm trying to pinpoint all of the physical things that he might be doing to create that sound. Because I think it is a very, very appealing sound and something that he's very consistent in. We've got that air shimmer that's happening. Obviously, there's a really wonderful accent. I just like this accent a lot, and I think it helps with singing as well. You have that sort of creaking sound. Um, there's a simplicity in the attack as well, so I don't hear uh, a lot of extra distortion or something like that or aggression. Instead, it's just a fairly simple sound. We're going to keep going with this. We'll see if I can pinpoint some more by the end. So delicate, lost in the I think he thinks about writing the air of his sound a lot. Some singers, you can tell if they think about the air as the motivator for their voice or if they think about something else. Um, with him, it, it sounds like he thinks about sending his air to a point a lot of times. That's partly what's creating that air shimmer, but it's also partly what's creating a really lovely line in the sound. So delicate. Notice the extra air that we got right after you there. It's like, it, it's almost like he's thinking more about the air necessarily than the phonation. This entire sound is very top heavy in, in the instruments and his production. And then we got some more of that reverse Tinkerbell before. It's really a very, very, um, very bright shimmery sound overall in this song. I just have to say, these lyrics are so beautiful. I would open my eyes and I never see anything I could, uh, if I'd only said the right words, what was, the, what was the line right before? If I'd only thought of the right words. Like these are just, they're gorgeous lines. And it's line after line after line. It's beautiful poetry. I, <laughs> I really love the, the lyrics here and I feel that they're easy to connect to. <laughs> Uh, 
uh, I just want to point out in this chorus, I think um, we have some subtle layers of harmony in the background. Uh, a lot of the stuff with the cure actually is subtle in general, which I'm just now discovering. I could have held on to your those doo-doos are actually the hook. Sometimes people will talk about what's the hook of the song, like what's the part that you would sing after the song is done, and the doo-doos, yeah, they're hooky. That's interesting. A sun behind the drum kit? It, that's, it's so interesting and evocative of, of like sentimentality overall. You get the idea of uh, bundled up and happiness together, which, you know, I think makes me think of Christmas and sentimentality there. But then you have the sunny days in the beach, which I'm like, oh yeah, sunny days in the beach in California. I'm sure that there are many other places we could be sentimental about though. <laughs> And video cameras, yeah. Looking so long at these pictures of you and never hold on to your heart. Looking so long for the words to be true and always just breaking. Pictures of you. I like the way he sounds like in the recording studio, he's probably a little closer to the mic there. And that in this music video, they've decided to bring it in closer to him and just have him directly uh, address the camera here. This feels like a very appropriate um, visual for that audio cue. Also, it's fascinating to see how little he's moving his mouth. I could see that in general, this is this is all about vibe. There's sort of a chill nature to it. And you don't want to have operatic enunciation for something like this. Um, if I were to talk about um, like a, a big narration, a big story, if you were telling a grand story, um, go take a look at Bruce Dickinson's mouth and notice the way that he enunciates for a grand story. That's a different kind of enunciation. This kind of song feels like it's a lot more sentimental, a lot more personal it needs to be i think a, a softened enunciation which he's definitely doing but we still get the words clearly looking so long for the words to be true but always just breaking apart my pictures of you <laughs> There's still a polar bear in the background. Check that out. I wonder who's in the polar bear outfit. Sometimes I think we become obsessed with lead singers partly because they are so willing to just be unapologetically unique, just themselves, truly authentic. I mean, his entire look has got, it's got character. That's fascinating to watch and study and, and maybe dare yourself to be as authentically yourself as this person is. <laughs> Definitely the hook, yeah.
Listen to the way that he brings in a lot of air, especially in those lower notes. It's like he gives air as part of the emphasis. That was a great example, right on that note. I feel like that might be what they're resolving too. Is this, this, uh, this essentially oscillation back and forth between two pitches? Whoa! Feels very unresolved there at the end. There's like a, almost like a tick tick sound that's happening in the background too, like time is passing us by. Fascinating. I love this combination of vibe and excellent lyrics. You put that with this totally unique voice, Robert Smith is able to deliver a message that is so sentimental and touching, yet also feels casual and simple. It's just a beautiful, beautiful combination of things that I think makes for excellent driving music and excellent analysis. If you want to hear some other great songs that I think are all about the vibe and the lyrics, you can check out this playlist over here. And may you fall more in love with music every day.